Yes, it's time for Garage Band Weekly. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa, indeed. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live. Today on this show, we're looking at all things Garage Band, Mac or iOS or everything in between. On the show today, we've got some news and notes. We're going to talk about the new Apple products and how things are going in the world of reviewing those. We're going to look at Numa Player, which is a very cool, brand new free player for your Mac or your iOS device. That's very cool. And we're going to rant about change. Do you fear change? I uh, I certainly do, especially when I change my settings and uh, we have to do a second take for the show. You'll understand that if you were here live. If you weren't, you should get along and be here live. G'day to the folks who are here live. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, hello to you. Joe Glenn knows what happened uh, here. Hello, Russ, 8889, the one and only Tremor Bear. And hello to uh, Thomas Christ. Uh, yeah, we had some folks here helping us test things to start with. Let's just go with that. <laughs> But we are here, we are going to talk all about GarageBand for the next, ooh, uh, you know, about an hour. So uh, let's dive into the news and notes of the week, shall we? So the first thing we want to talk about here is uh, the Apple products that were launched last week. Now, uh, a few people had review models of them, a few of the special ones, but we're now at the point where a lot of regulars, a lot of regos, as we call them, have actually got uh, these in their hot little hands. So if we jump over here to the apple.com, the things that were announced, we have the new Mac Studio. Now, you might be thinking, hey, I'm a musician, I'm a studio musician, maybe the Mac Studio is what I need. Well, it almost certainly isn't, but what we have seen is that those that have been using it, and yes, yeah, you can see there, it's like a, it's like an extruded out uh, Mac Mini. It's a Mac Mini on steroids. It's got the big chungus body there. It's got all the ports. It's got all the things, and it's got massive power. So it, this is running either the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra. Yeah, there's all of there's all of Apple's amazing things. But there, there's the thing. So either a 10 core or a 20 core CPU. So you can get the Max, which is the same that's in the uh, MacBook Pro that I have and aren't running right now, more on that later, or the M1 Ultra. Here's the, here's the cut down version of this, folks. It's amazing and it's absolute overkill for what most people need. I'm now back running on my Mac Mini M1 with eight gig of RAM and the, you know, the half the amount of cores and processors is this and it's running absolutely fine. So uh, do you need this for most people in the home studio? No, but if you're going to buy yourself a new uh, desktop a desktop Mac, the Mac Studio is worth a look because it is definitely going to be overpowered and uh, be a, you're going to future-proof yourself. That's what I'm hearing from a lot of people. They're like, I just want to future-proof myself against anything else. The other bit of kit we got was the new, uh, I, the new iPad. I'm trying to find it. There it is, iPad. So the new iPad iPad Air. So the iPad Air is now closer to the Pro than it's ever been before. And I actually think this is a great device. If you are looking to get into iOS music creation, this is a pretty cool device. And I've had a heap of questions this week asking, what's the difference now between this and the Pro? And there really isn't a lot. It all comes down to the screen and the connection. So the screen on this one is not the same, especially the 12.9 inch iPad. The new iPad Pro is a 12.9 inch and it's the uh, the HDR display, the, uh, what do they call it? Mini LED display. So this doesn't have that. And the other difference is that the, the port, while they both use USB-C, this one here doesn't support Thunderbolt. So if you're using, oh, it's plugged in. If you're using like a, an SSD, a Thunderbolt drive, and you want the absolute maximum transfer speed, you want to go for an iPad Pro. If you don't care about that, or that means nothing to you, the iPad Air is going to be absolutely amazing for you. So it's another great option. And I'm not even really going to talk much about the iPhone SE because it is almost essentially the exact same phone as the SE version 2. In fact, if you've, if you've got the SE 2, like Jade Star I know uses the SE 2, there's really no point upgrading to this. Yeah, you get the faster chip, so things are going to be a bit snappier. If you were using it for a lot of, say, video editing or music production, then uh, this thing is going to be uh, a lot better. But if, again, a lot of the stuff we do, especially here in GarageBand, isn't actually using that much. So you don't actually need a lot of this new gear. So, I mean, is it good that we've got new gear? Sure. Am I going to buy any of it? No, not at this stage. So, uh, yeah, if, if you want, if you've got any questions or if you've uh, decided to go for any of these, then uh, do let us know uh, your experience because it's interesting. And uh, the, <laughs> the one final thing, and this is, this is bizarre, I must admit. I, I didn't really see this coming and I don't, still don't quite understand what the deal is. So if, you, uh, if you're aware, 
Apple got back into making screens here. And this one here, the Pro Display XDR, here in Australia, it's a 32K, 32 inch 6K retina display. Yeah, this is that famous one that cost 5,000 US, it's like 8,500 Australian, and it's the one that had the stand that cost like $1,000 just to go with it for a stand on it. Uh, so, yeah, that's for absolute pros. So, what Apple have done is they've released this one, this studio display. And the weird thing about this is that it's actually got an A13 Bionic chip inside it. So it's like running an iPhone inside a monitor, uh, which is weird. But here's the problem. All the chip in there is doing is, as it said there, is the uh, the the webcam and the the audio and video stuff like the audio and, and speakers and microphone so it's really for two and a half grand here in australia it is not something for a 27 inch screen i'm looking at a 27 inch screen here right now in asus and i think it cost me 300 <laughs> so uh and you can definitely get yourself some pretty decent uh, 4k monitors uh, even up to 32 inch for you know four or five six hundred dollars uh so two and a half grand not something that i'm going to be looking at anytime soon but you know what there are people out there that go, yep, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Uh, Thomas Christ says, mostly if you're heavy 4K or 8K, you want those Mac Studio. Yeah. And look, if you're, if you're a video editor and it's your business and every second counts and every little bit of color gradient counts and you're running multiple streams of 8, 4K or 8K video, yeah, absolutely. That's the sort of stuff you need. But other than that, probably not. Uh, Jeff Hutchins says, I've been enjoying my iPhone 8 Plus because I like the home button and it seems to be working well. Wouldn't mind trying out the SE 2022. Yeah, and that's who it's for, to be honest. Uh, it's, for, it's for you, it's for me, it's for people like my wife who love our home buttons. I still love my iPhone 6S Plus because headphone jack, home button. Yeah, I, would, I hope they make the iPhone retro, the, the iPhone old man for, for people, for old men like me who like their stuff uh, a little bit retro. So that's the gear stuff. Let's move on from that. Let's talk about some more fun things, including uh, this fun thing. Uh, the fun thing I'm talking about is Patrick. <laughs> Patrick over at the Garage Band Guide. This video here, oh, look, I haven't even liked it yet. This video here is uh, is blowing up for Pat, and uh, it's the the why did Apple hide these Garage Band features? Now, you as a sav savvy Garage Bander probably know a lot of these, and I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it. Sorry, Patrick, go watch the video anyway. But he's put it in the description, so he's gonna I'm gonna spoil it here. You got the one tap record, you've got the custom chords, you've got note labels, finger your drums, ooh, uh, you've got the autoplay alternatives and DIY drum kit. So what Patrick has done is in this very short, very informative video, seven and a half minutes, he has um, put together some really, really good tips. And if you are a GarageBand iOS user, you must go and watch this. Just just look at that face. He's like, please watch my video. No. Um, but yeah, if we let, let's have a quick listen to, uh, to Patrick. At least you'll find them a little bit interesting. It's true. You will find them a little bit interesting. Sorry, he did a big thing where it was like, blow your mind before that. And I'm like, I'm going to play the bit where he says they're a little bit interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, go check out that video because if you're not aware of those uh, shortcuts and those tips and hacks, then um, yeah, you might learn something. Uh, like we say, the reason after every show that I do here, I know I cover some basic stuff, but it's amazing that even when I'm covering the basics, some people will come back to me and say, oh man, I had no idea about that. I had no idea that that was a thing. Uh, yes, another full-time YouTuber. He's hitting it out of the park, our friend Patrick over there. Uh, Tremor Bear says the, the button and the headphone jack is a must. I have a big 13. Uh, no button or jack. It's like a car with no tires. Yeah, and every time I look every time I look at this, I feel a slight amount of sadness. When I look at that notch, I feel sad. When I see there's no button, I feel sad. When I see that there is no headphone jack, I feel sad. So, yeah, I'm covered in sadness. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the title of my next album, Pete John's Covered in Sadness. Speaking of my next album, or speaking of music in general, um, something very, very cool uh, happened yesterday. I got an email from, uh, from a mysterious person by the name of Mr. Smith, who I've seen hanging around the channel and around the Metalhead Hippie channel and a few other places. And uh, he said, it was, it was the weirdest message. He's like, oh, I see that you've formed, no, what is it? you've formed a band with me. Uh, you don't know this yet, but, but you and I are in a band together. I'm like, okay, this is getting a bit weird and creepy and uh, what what mr smith did and, and this is not garage band related but i had to mention it here because it is so much fun what he did is he took my performance of foxy lady from my happy hour show and i can't play the audio but i'll show you a bit of the video and he jammed along to it and the end result is about 10x on my original performance i thought my performance was okay like i love Jimi hendrix i love foxy lady 
But yeah, we, we, when you jump over here and see the video and, and listen to it again, I'll, I'll have to put the volume down here, otherwise we're getting copyright claims. But he took me in my, in my shade there, playing Foxy Lady, and added bass and added epic drums and added shaker and added some like backing vocals as well. It is an absolute awesome like just yeah it's weird when you collaborate and you don't even know you're collaborating and it's, it's happened a few times before but very rarely i've had folks cover my songs before i've had people remix and resample joey helpish resampled my whole album a, a year or so ago but yeah it is very darn cool so uh mr smith whoever you are uh, very well done. We've got a lot of mysterious people out there in the community. We've got like Wi-Fi. We've got Mr. Smith. We've got uh, a lot of people doing cool things. Uh, so yeah, an, an album of such cover. Yeah, well, that, that'd be cool to do uh, to do that one. Yeah, co Covered in Sadness could be uh, a covers, an album just covering depressing songs. That would be cool. But yeah, no, it was. It was very, very cool. And like I say, despite not being GarageBand related, uh, yeah, I had to be a little bit self-flagellating because I was super chuffed. Uh, and I think Ron played it yesterday on, on his show as well. So uh, it, is, uh, it is awesome stuff. Really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith, whoever you are. All right, let's, uh, let's crack in. Before we jump into some tips and some plugins and into Numa Player, a uh, quick reminder that if you do have any questions, all you need to do is put the word question in front of your comment. And for those that are here live, I'll be happy to answer any questions. If you're watching on the replay, don't worry. We love you just as much. All you need to do is drop a comment down below. I am always down there. Did you know that I answer every comment? Well, now you do. Yeah, every single comment on every single video to the point where I comment on other people's videos and I don't get a response. And I'm like, dude, what's up? And then I realized that it's someone with like 2 million subscribers and there were 700 comments on that video. I'm like, okay, maybe not everyone can, uh, can see that. Yeah, go, go check it out, Dave Fox. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it reminds me of Agent Smith. Mr. Anderson. I'm halfway through the new Matrix movie and it's taken me it's taken me a while because I got an hour in and it was so heavy duty I had to like pause. Like me and my wife were watching it and we're like, we can't go to bed like at this point. We have to like watch something. We can't finish the movie. It was another hour and a half to go. But we had to, um, we paused and watched the Jeopardy and then went to bed. <laughs> because <laughs> that's how we roll when we're old. Uh, oh, the vid's on the Discord server too. Very cool. I love it. i got to get over to Discord. By the way, join the Discord server. I, I may even hang out there. I may, I may jump on there when we finish this show. Let, let's say that. I'll jump on the audio only, uh, uh, audio chat on the Discord after this show. If you're watching live or if you're watching on the replay and you, you're here fresh, uh, I'll go do that because, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried out the audio chat and apparently it's pretty cool. So I'll go, I'll go spend some Discord time while I go for my walk. So that's the news and notes. Um, um, round to the week, as I talked about, fear of change. Here's the weird thing. Uh, it's it's going to be a little bit of a weird rant that's going to go off in a few different directions here. So the first change that I made recently was I changed my Your Music Live show from very early Saturday morning to not so early Monday morning for me. So it moved from Friday afternoon and Friday evening to Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. I was really hesitant to do this because I was worried that the folks in the UK and Europe, it would be too late for them. And look, it is. But I've realized that often I don't make changes that are actually going to help or benefit me because of my fear of not benefiting other people. And I, I, I've, I tell other people this all the time, that number one, chasing perfection is not worth it because perfection is a myth and you're never going to reach it in your music, in your life, in anything. And number two, living your life trying to please everyone else all the time is not actually going to help you and your ultimate happiness and fulfillment. And that's not to say you shouldn't try to help people. I, at the end of every show, I say, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and keep creating. Because I honestly think that it's like when you're in a plane, you do. You have to fit your seatbelt and your oxygen mask first before you help anyone else including children, especially children. Um, if you have children, you'll know that if you're in a bad mood, there's no way you're being a good parent. But if you look after yourself, a little bit of self-care, a little bit of time to yourself, doing whatever you need to do, then um, yeah, you're going to feel better and you're going to do better. So how does that relate to change and fear of change? Well, every time I do something different outside of my comfort zone, I feel good. But the lead up to that, the procrastination that goes into that, the fact that I just don't want to do things, that's annoying. Um, and I need to get past that. So here, here's another example with my music and with my video creation. My, the brand new MacBook Pro that I've been using is amazing for everything except live streaming. What it's been doing with live streaming is you would have seen it. It does this weird thing where the upload speed just goes to zero. I've checked my connections. I've checked my internet. I've checked my whole home network. It was all 100% fine. So it was definitely at the MacBook level. So I need to actually get that fixed. But I was so reluctant to just abandon that and go back to the Mac Mini and plug this back in 
you know how long it took me when I finally decided it was yesterday, well not yesterday, it was a couple of days ago before YML, two hours beforehand, I'm like, this is ridiculous, I just need this to work this week, I need to make sure that it's actually that problem. So I unplugged the MacBook Pro, I plugged back in the Mac Mini, I booted it back up, couple of quick updates, and boom, we were on our way, and it was working. And it just, it, it screamed out to me that sometimes we spend so long procrastinating doing the thing, when the level of effort and mental effort and physical effort that actually goes into doing the thing is way less than what we actually exude by putting it off. So sometimes, and in fact, there's a book called Eat That Frog, and it talks about the fact that when you get up and you're doing things, there's always that one niggly thing that you're procrastinating, and you know I call it positive procrastination. You'll go, you'll you'll wash the dog, you'll you'll vacuum the floor, you'll go and um, clean out the car, you'll do everything you can to avoid doing that one thing, and while you're doing things. You're, just, you're basically feeling guilty because you haven't done that one thing. If you eat the frog, if you get up and do the thing that you've been putting off, you just go, oh, that actually wasn't that hard. And it just puts you in this mindset for the rest of the day. So that's, uh, that's what I think about that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I thought there was a yeah. There you go. The time change added to an unevent to, to an eventful weekend for me in a good way. Yeah. Well, so and again, I, I lined it with the time change, so they're good. Uh, iPhone SE twenty twenty two headphone jack. No, alas, it has no headphone jack, which is sad. Uh, question from Jalen: Is the new player free? Greetings, long time no see. Hello. Yes. Uh, the new player, as in the new Numa player that we're talking about today. Yes, one hundred percent free. And in fact, we'll be jumping in and talking about that in a moment. Uh, it does indeed make zero sense that the Mini would work better than the MacBook Pro, but it does. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, you can not, not eat the frog, but kiss it. There you go. If you prefer to kiss the frog instead of eat it, go for it. Um, yeah. And, and in terms of what the actual problem is, I still don't know. So back in my Windows days, what I would have done is wiped it and reinstalled a fresh Windows and just done everything fresh just to see if that works. But I don't even know with Mac. I don't know in the world of Mac how to problem solve. I don't know how to do network uh, monitoring. I don't know how to do system resources monitoring. So I think I need to, um, I think I need to consult some professionals, maybe, you know, ask Apple. That could be interesting. We'll do it. We'll do a video series where I actually go to the Apple help desk and see if they can solve it. Uh, I think it might be pretty high level. I'm like, I'm using a MacBook Pro and StreamYard and a Brio camera and OBS virtual camera and uh, my Zoom uh, live track mixer. And I'm trying to uh, do a 1080p stream to uh, StreamYard across four different platforms. And I get slow upload speeds. Why is that? Crickets, crickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get on to our tip of the week. We're going to have a quick drink once again. Thanks for the questions. If anyone else has questions, please throw them in the chat. And if you're watching on the replay, throw your questions down in the comments below. So let's talk Mac, shall we? I don't do enough on GarageBand Mac. I know it's it's usually like the, the poor cousin of GarageBand iOS these days. But I've been fiddling about with GarageBand on Mac recently. And uh, I wanted to show you Here's how we can actually use an external instrument in GarageBand on Mac. So I'm going to demonstrate this with the brand new Numa player. So if we jump over here, I've got to find it now. I had I had it up before. Now I've got to find it. There it is. All right, cool. So to use an external instrument on the Mac, you need to download it first of all. Now, unlike uh, on iOS, where you just go to the App Store, a lot of plugins you actually download from the website. So I'm here on the Studio Logic webpage for Numa Player. I'm going to hit this download button in the top right corner. It's going to say, yep, you're going to download this. I'm going to choose Mac OS. Now, the cool thing about Numa Player is it's Windows, Mac, and iOS or iPad OS. So as, when you download it, you can see in the bottom left corner, it's going to download a package, and it's going to take a few minutes there. Here's the thing. I'm just going to uh, I'm going to pause that because here's one I prepared earlier. If we go to the finder here, I've actually already downloaded it. Uh, well, now it's, now it's not showing there. This is great. We better we better continue downloading that. I will uh, resume. <laughs> This is all going very well, isn't it? There's something about this show that it's going to be a little bit all over the shop. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait for that to download. We'll wait for that to download and then we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, while we wait for that, uh, yes, iOS 15.4 is indeed out. Didn't talk about it, probably should have. I think I mentioned it last week that it was, uh, it was out or it was about to be out. Haven't heard any, um, any bad things yet. If anyone has, do let me know. Um, because yeah, I, I'm, I would 
like to provide any warnings that no one said this plugin doesn't work or this app doesn't work or anything doesn't work. It seems to be uh, pretty good. And I think uh, as Jade says around this sort of stuff, if you're going a full version, like if you're going from 14 to 15, you need to be pretty careful. If you're just going from 15.3 to 15.4, it's not so bad. So uh, you'll be you'll be okay. So that's going ahead and downloading there in the corner. We've got about 30 seconds left. It is a pretty big file, so it's about 250 meg because Numa Player actually has some really cool instruments in there, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. And don't forget that Numa Player is also available for iOS. You can download that directly from the App Store, and I've got a video about that, which you can check out linked in the description. All right, let's see if this is going to finish doing its thing. Oh, look, there's a, there's a very cool, um, I haven't actually looked at this, but they've got, oh, they've got a whole bunch of like user guides and things there, but we'll go through it uh, separately um, here. There you go. The user interface. It's, this thing is so next level. It's, it's ridiculous. All right. So that's downloaded now. We're going to click on the package. It's now going to jump here and give us this installer window. It's going to go through and install this. We'll just hit continue a bunch of times. We're going to agree to the copyright. We're going to agree again <laughs> without reading the license, but of course we have. It would like to uh, access files on removable volume. Not quite sure what it means. I guess it means it may want to install it onto my hard drive that's external. Yes, it does, but we just want it on the Mac hard drive. So we're going to continue. We're going to install. And now I just need to pop in my password, which I will do now while I'm over here. <laughs> I never trust it, even though it brings up the little stars. Um, yeah, I never, never quite trust it. And I'm always paranoid that I'm going to accidentally have a camera that's pointing at my fingers when I do this stuff. And the reason I'm showing this is that it took me a while to work this out because coming from iOS, it's quite different here on the, on the, uh, on the Mac. All right, let's jump back over here. So that is now done. The installation is successful. The software was installed and uh, Mac is actually pretty good. It tells you, do you want to put that installer file to the bin? I do. We don't need that anymore. So that is installed now. We can now jump back over to GarageBand Mac, which is here. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. Now, one thing that tripped me up the first time I started using external instruments is that you need to restart GarageBand because GarageBand scans plugins when you first open it. So what I recommend doing is just quitting GarageBand here, dropping out of there. We don't need to save that because we haven't made any changes and then opening it back up. So we'll just go back and open GarageBand. I just use uh, the command space bar to do that and type in GarageBand and there we're back. So now we can actually set up a new track. So we're just going to delete this one and what I'll do is it will grab a software instrument. So I'm going to click this one here in a brand new fresh project and hit create. Uh, we've already got a typing keyboard. We'll put that aside. I'll show you how to bring that up in a moment. And this is where I got trapped the first time I tried to do this is I didn't know how to add this. I was coming down here trying to add it as a plugin, but what you actually have to do is change the instrument. So instead of coming here to a plugin and trying to go, where, where is it? What uh, If it's an instrument as opposed to an effect plugin, you actually tap right on the instrument here. And I know many people will be saying, I can't believe if you didn't know that but if I got it wrong there's going to be some of you that are going to get it wrong too so we tap on the electric piano there and we tap the little thing to the side here we can go all instruments now check it out here we've got studio logic numa player we'll take it in stereo thank you and boom there it is amazing interface right you get knobs no you don't you actually can use it so what we could do is if we tap on if we come on over here and we tap on the actual word Numa player, it brings it on up here. So this is our Numa player. And uh, the reason I had the, the typing keyboard up there before is if you use Command and K, you get this little sucker here. And if you don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, I have a MIDI keyboard here, but it's plugged into my iPad. And I could be not lazy and plug it into my Mac. But for this demo, I'm just going to use the on-screen keyboard because anyone can use this. And if we turn the volume up, you'll actually hear we have the ability to play these keys just using your A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K. And you can play on this. So uh, I'll deep dive into this in other videos, which again, you can check out in the description. But to give you a quick tour of Numa Player, all we could need to do is choose which of these we want. So you've got pianos, you've got electric pianos, you've got keys, and you've got strings and pads. You can actually enable all four of them and get some uh, pretty funky sounds. And you can actually decide how much of each you want. So you can blend in different amounts using these faders. 
And a good place to start with this plugin in any is to just come up to the top here and play around. So let's just go with like an EP Mark I and you get this sort of sound. Pretty darn cool, yeah. There's a whole bunch of other things behind the scenes here. You've got a bunch of settings that you can change on each one. You've got individual effects. Did you see this? How cool is this? Individual effects for each one. You can actually add different things like delays and tremolos and flanges and choruses. Uh, and you've even got your master faders here where you've got master effects, reverb and delay, uh, as well as your overall master volume. And you can change around your EQ and your compressor. So uh, it's pretty cool. So it's simple to get in here now. If we want to record in a sound, all we need to do is uh, hit the record button or R on our keyboard and we can start recording. And it will record that sound in with our external instrument and it stores it as MIDI. We can then adjust that so we can then change this if we wanted that to actually be this clavinet instead of our electric piano. We can go back and play it. And we can adjust that to our heart's content. And again, because it's a software instrument and it's AUV3, we can even change the entire instrument itself. If we come back here and we wanted this to be something else, whoops, we pressed the wrong button, we can actually click on the side here and uh, change it up here. So we don't have to have that. We can go back to a different instrument if we wanted to. Come in here and make it the uh, AU MIDI synth here in GarageBand. I've never used this before. Does it actually work? <laughs> It does. It sounds quite bad. But yeah, you can uh, you can change it to another instrument entirely, or you can copy and paste this MIDI data because it is just MIDI. So uh, that is how simple it is to use external instruments here in GarageBand on Mac. Boo! Mac love. We don't get a lot of Mac love around here, but I, I had that question a lot through the week saying, how... um. How, how do you how do you do this on Mac? You only talked about iOS, and I'm like, I, I pretty much always only talk about iOS. <laughs> iOS is my jam, man. Um, uh, absolutely. Imagine, Timothy. Imagine 20 years ago, what it would cost to have all the. Well, I know what it costs to have all those things. In fact, like my my old Casios and, and Yamaha keyboards didn't have sounds that are even that good and didn't have the ability to blend in four together. Sometimes some keyboards had like you know dual mode where you could blend two different patches together, but the complexity of that, like the ability to add in all those presets and all the different effects, it, it's just ridiculous. And it's, a, I mean, it's a pretty big file, but I've been using it. It doesn't seem to have a whole heap of overhead in terms of processing power. And because you can use a lot of those plugins directly in the app, it's, it makes it uh, nice and clean. You don't have to be adding external plugins all the time, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, you can copy and paste MIDI on GB Mac. Uh, yeah, you can. You can indeed. So if we, uh, if we come in here... Oh, and uh, we say set up a new track. We just go new software instrument track and we just make it like the, 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 the guitar, which sounds pretty dodgy. If we just drag this whoop, boop, and put it there, it's now on the guitar. So basically anything green can go onto anything green, anything blue can go on blue, yellow can go on yellow. So, And it's actually a lot more flexible than the um, than on GarageBand iOS because I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you can even use like, if you go over to the strings, which I'm trying to find. Why can't I see string? Orchestral, there we go. Orchestral, strings, strings ensemble. Um, we can move this into the strings as well because it doesn't have that stupid thing that iOS has where doesn't have that stupid iOS thing where strings are different to guitars, which are different to keys. They're all just MIDI. So it, it makes life a lot easier. So yeah, you can, and you can, if you want to copy and paste, you can just copy and then paste into somewhere else. Oops, I pasted onto the same track. That's never a good idea. Don't paste onto the same track. So there you go, paste. Yep, we can have it on all of these instruments and we can sound really cool. Yeah, good one. Uh, nice one, Johns. But yes, no, you definitely can. Uh, you can copy and paste your MIDI to your heart's content. All right. <laughs> I'll just see if we've got any other questions. I have a Mac Mini as well. Which build do you... Uh, I have the absolute base Mac Mini. So this is the 8 gigabyte, 256 gig of hard drive, uh, absolute base model 2020, 2020 Mac Mini M1. That's what, I, that's what I roll with. I refuse to get a computer. And sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I did as well. For a long time, I wanted to use just iOS. And you know what? For most of my music production, I still do use iOS. But um, 
I have found that using a, a desktop, like the ability to have two monitors and have all my gear plugged in, two different audio interfaces, because I've got both my, uh, my Focusrite Scala and my Zoom Live Track plugged into the Mac, it just works. Uh, how about outside of GarageBand? That's a good question. I you can I think you can export someone someone's going to correct me on this, but I think you can export MIDI. Can you can you bounce that? You can in Logic, but I'm not sure if you can uh, can you actually just export MIDI here in GarageBand. I can't remember. Um, I don't think so. Export song to disk. I'm not sure. Someone will uh, someone will say what you can do. I'm not sure though if you can because obviously you can't in iOS. You can't export MIDI basically at all. I mean, there's plugins and there's workarounds and things, but I'm not 100% sure whether GarageBand Mac has direct uh, MIDI export. Uh, Thomas says, what's nice about iOS is the ability to directly interact uh, in a tactile way with the apps. You can actually turn the knobs on a sit. Yeah, it's true. I must admit that using the mouse uh, for, for things like knobs is, is a little bit of annoyance. So if we come back to this, uh, we'll just change this one up. Burr, burr, burr. We'll go back to the uh, Numa player. Boomp, boomp, boomp. Um, yeah, when, when it got to sort of these effects and things, when we're putting these on and you're having to like, yeah, like click your mouse and drag up or drag down and that's your right and your left, it does feel a little bit not quite as tactile as, you know, when you're, you're on the iPad and you come in here and you can actually tap. I mean, I'm, I'm, I use the mouse so that you folks can actually see what I'm doing, but that you can actually come in here and... Uh, on these controls, you can do the same thing, but when you can reach up and just grab it with your finger and just sort of actually circularly slide the knob, actually, no, these ones are up down. There you go. Some, some of them have like circular control where you can actually do it circularly. This one's just an up down thing, but it's still, yeah, the ability to reach out, reach out and touch somebody or something is, is kind of cool. Uh, so uh, yes, Numa, Numa player, follow in. Uh, it's a logic thing uh, only from memory, not in GB. Yeah, uh, I think that might be the case. That I think that's one of the few, one of the things that help that upgrading to logic is going to help you with is the ability to um to do that. <clears throat> one of the other changes, and this is another like uh, this is off. Yeah, this is going to be a weird show because I'm going to go off on tangents here. But one of the other things that I've um that I've done is you might notice that when I rock my desk now. It doesn't shake as much. I'm, as I'm doing that now, it's shaking. But when I play, say, the piano, we're getting less shake because my webcam is no longer on my monitor. So I can, I can shimmy this monitor forward and backwards and the webcam only moves a little bit because it's actually on. Now, here's the problem. I wanted to put it on a mic stand, but mic stands don't have the right threading. They have the medium and the large. I don't know what they're called, like one eighth and one quarter inch or whatever it is. They have the medium and the large threading. You need the uh, tripod threading for it, for the webcam. So I've, at the moment, I'm using my tripod, but like a monopod. So I've got it stuck up and like crammed in behind my desk against the wall. So we're getting a lot less movement and it means that when I tap the desk and when I do things, it's not moving. So yeah, it only took me two years of being in this space with a webcam flopping around on my monitor to realize that, hey, you know what? If I spend 10 minutes, it's going to be significantly better. Uh, Thomas says, uh, I was having issues with Numa Player and Logic. Had notes dropping out after playing piano for a while with sustain. Well, that's interesting. I, I haven't played around with it enough, but we're about to jump in and play around with it here in iOS. Hello, Manfredini Retro Games. Uh, if you're here and you're watching live and you haven't said g'day, please uh, give us a shout. Say hello. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we, we, we love lurkers, but uh, if you want to be brave, if you want to, we, we talk about fearing change. Maybe you never, maybe you never comment in, in live shows. This is... This is not like others. I know that there's some places where you go and you comment on a live show and people are dicks. Uh, this is a dick-free zone. <laughs> so you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, let me just check my notes here, make sure that we've covered everything. So yeah, that was our tip of the week. Um, yeah, our plug well, it kind of covered. I had the tip of the week was how to add external instruments and our plug of the week was Numa Player on Mac because it's our Numa Player special. So there you go. You got a twofer there, which means we can dive straight on in to our feature topic. In fact, before we do that, Let's uh, let's just say let's just say a quick thank you to our sponsors, shall we? Because uh, the sponsor of the show today, and I should have had this set up earlier and better, because all the different links that I've I've had set up on my other Mac, now that I'm using the mini again, 
it doesn't just pop straight up, but uh, there you go. That was a bit clunky. But uh, yes, today, the show today is brought to you by, uh, yes, my webpage. You can subscribe to the mailing list. By the GarageBand iOS FAQ. So you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand and you can check out my iOS FAQ. You can grab the guide for just $10 at my beginner's guide there that can get help kick start your GarageBand journey. And then you can come in here and check out all of these cool playlists of amazing videos. And then we have this, our FAQ. So alphabetical order, if you're like, hmm, I wonder what uh, I wonder, wonder what Pete says about reverb. Well, we can scroll on down here, and now I'm hoping I actually have a reverb one. <laughs> I don't. How to, oh, yes, I do. Oh, phew. So how to add reverb on a track. There you go. It tells you the answer. So that's the TLDW. But then if you want a video about it, you click there. <coughs> and boom. Hey, Pete here for Studio Live. You get a quick video of me at the cricket uh, about to tell you how... Uh, oh, look at that. No masks. Oh, those were the days. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so you get the ability to uh, to watch videos about each thing. So uh, I, I think it's cool. I've spent a lot of time here making sure that it's all there. Uh, it's all free with the exception of that $10 guide. And it's all over there at studiolivetoday.com slash garageband. And we thank me for supporting me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dan Eckberg Music. Uh, thank you for dropping on by. Uh, yes, hit the like button for Pete's sake. I see what you did there. I see what you did. Uh, g'day, Matt Malone. Thank you for being here and for saying g'day. Hope you're doing well. Mike and Dawn, hello. Hello, Allo, Allo Maniac. Alia Maniac. Alio Manic. Let's, let, let, let's work this through. Alia, Alia Manic. Alia Manic. Man, I'm gonna to have to get better at this. Better at this. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's see if we've got anyone else. BBS uh, has a question. Uh, in the Garage Band, is said record level do not change the different side, the side way when you record something. Is the Garage Band is said record level do that change the different side of side the way when you record something? Not a hundred percent on what you're talking about there. In GarageBand iOS in particular, there are your input gain and your output gain. So I've talked about this before, and you can search my name, search Pete John's input gain, and there's a whole video about this. But when you're recording something, there are two different things you need to consider. Your input gain. This is the amount of volume or gain going in to when you're recording, when you're actually recording something, and your output gain is just the volume level. So this is the one that's important because you don't want to clip your signal, and this is the one that if it's too loud going in, you're going to get distortion and clipping and, and whatnot. So that needs to be set at a good level when you're recording. This one just simply doesn't matter. This one can be as loud or as soft as you want, and it's not going to make any specific difference. So uh, that's just what you hear back in your headphones, the playback audio. So hope if that wasn't what you're asking, maybe uh, maybe rephrase it and uh, ask again but uh, that's that's the difference between input and output gain hello signature music services uh, i am enjoying the live and the live uh all right ali maniac alia random alia random alia manic so alia random alia manic got it cool yeah don't forget about the uh, the like button and obsessed oh, okay manic is obsessed cool I like it. I like it a lot. Um, thank you for the thank you for the explanation. Yeah, no one wants clipping. You don't want to clip your signal uh, on the Mac inside the Garage Band the slider. Uh, yeah, you might. You know what? Jump over to the. This is a good uh, advertisement. The Garage Band users Facebook group is highly underrated. And uh, if you're not already a Garage Band uh, Garage Band users user uh, over on the Facebooks, I suggest doing it. And look, I know not everyone's into the Facebook, and you don't have to use the Facebook for anything else. But if you use it uh, just for your uh, for your questions, what you can do there is you can provide you know pictures and images and and ask more in depth questions. It, it helps out. Uh, yes, and there is the Numa Player by the way. Yes, uh, there's a link to Numa Player on the App Store, which is what we're about to talk about now. Now, uh, hello, Sync Cat. That might be Jade's subtle way of saying uh, Johns. Get on with the actual uh, feature topic, buddy. You, you're getting off track here, and I am. So I've been playing around with Numa Player for uh, over a week now. And I'm finding it super cool. So what I thought I would do is dive in to some of the features of Numa Player. And we'll do that by creating a little song. Now, I've already queued up Numa Player here, but I'm going to delete it. Yeah, we're going to start from scratch. So to activate this, we need to firstly go to the external option. So we're going to scroll across until we hit external. We're going to hit audio unit extensions. Now, first of all, you need to go away and download it from the App Store, link in the description, and then you're going to tap on Numa Player here. It is going to load up and 
we can play. Now, what I'm going to do here is just turn the volume up uh, on that track. This is that output volume we were talking about, uh, just so that we can hear this a little bit better. And so by default, you'll come in here, it'll be the Model D uh, piano, acoustic piano that you have there. And on the iPad here, look, the screen is a little bit harder to use than it is, say, on your... Um, on your Mac, but there are ways you can you can drop the keyboard away like that if you, you're finding that you can't actually see what you're doing here because you don't actually need the keyboard. Whoop, you don't need the keyboard there if you're, for instance, using a MIDI keyboard, which is what I'm using here today. So obviously, if you're using the, the touchscreen keyboard, you'd leave it on there because... Uh, that touchscreen down there is not going to be big enough for you to do your keying. Uh, but yeah, it, for this demo, we're going to put that out of the way just so that you can see the interface in all its glory. And you can do that with any, any of these plugins. If you're using external MIDI, you can uh, put it away like that. So what we're going to do here, let's let's just record in, in its absolute default. So it comes in here, it sets this acoustic piano. We can turn on and off other instruments if we want to here. And see these little bars? I didn't notice this at first, but you can see which ones, which channel is using by these bars at the bottom here. And the more bars you get, the more sounds you're using. So let's just record in. Uh, we've just got 16 tracks here. I'm just going to do uh, I'm just going to do uh, eight, eight tracks, uh, eight uh, bars of this one. So, oh, by the way, check this out. I'm using a uh, sustain pedal. When I kick, when I put the sustain pedal in, pedal noise. How cool is that? Actually, that, I mean, that's attention to detail that you don't get. You get in like paid apps like Ravenscroft, but you don't get that sort of attention to detail in a free app. So let's record in a piano part and then we'll build out a little eight bar loop with this. Two, three, four. You know what helps? Leaving the metronome on. <laughs> so we'll undo that and we'll record again. Two. We only did four bars. That's okay. I think this will this will give us an idea here. We don't need to. What, once you see how it works, you'll be able to know how you can expand upon that. So, plus we could also just loop it if we wanted to. So now we've got this one track here. I was a little bit early on that, but here's the cool thing. Because like, did you hear there? I did it on purpose. Let's just say I did it on purpose. Here how it's a little bit early on that one. Well, because this is a virtual instrument, we can actually come into our track settings and turn on some quantization. So this is kind of, it's a bit of a swing rhythm, but it's a light swing. So I'd probably use the 1 16th light swing here, and this should adjust just tidy this up a bit. No, it doesn't. Maybe it's a 1 8th swing that we need here. No, it's not working for us. Maybe it's the triplet that we actually need. And yeah, there's a bit of trial and error here for cheating. That's better. Uh, actually, yeah, if, if, I, if I knew my music theory better, I would have known that because it's a one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Yeah, so it is a triplet rhythm. Ding, 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 a ding, a ding. So I should have known that earlier. But there you go. That helps you clean things up. Nice, we've got our nice rhythm there. So we can add another track. Now there's two ways to add your second track when you're using something like this. You can go through the pains of pressing it there and going audio unit extension and going Numa player and being back here and that will take you back to the same default. Or the, the way that I like to do this, if I'm using the same instrument plugin a bunch of times, we'll just delete that, I like to duplicate. So I'm just gonna tap on this one and duplicate it. And then that brings the exact same settings as this one. So if you've tweaked it already, you've now got the, uh, the first track here, sounding like that. And then when we go to the second track and tap there and tap there, it's gonna sound exactly the same. Very cool. So uh, let's let's uh, dial in a different sound, shall we, for our next one. Uh, does it work with AUM? Good question. Someone else will hopefully answer that. I would imagine so, because it's just an AUV3 plugin. So uh, it worked with anything that supports AUV3 audio unit version 3. So this time we're going to select a different sound. Let's go with an electric piano. So here we've got, oh by the way, to, to change here, we'll, we'll select that one and we're just selecting this one here. Now this is your volume control for each one. 
-hmm. which is more relevant when we start mixing things in. And then when you've selected what you want there, you can hit this drop down here and change it up. So I'm thinking something like a whirly, something a bit like. I think that sort of sort of sound. So we'll go with this whirly and we'll record again. We're going to layer this up. So hit record. Record that over. We have confirmation from uh, Leela. Yes, Numa AUM, thumbs up. All right, so we've got our two tracks now. There is uh, our piano and our whirly. <laughs> Already sounding really good. We'll turn off the metronome uh, there because we've kind of got our groove going on here. Uh, let's hit the uh, plus button. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do the trick again. We'll tap it. We'll duplicate it. And we'll grab it here. Let's get a bit fancy and schmancy, shall we? There's a couple of things we can do to get fancy here. One is to use our presets. Now, I know many people say, presets, you've got to do it all yourself. But presets help you learn how to use an app. In my opinion, if you're using a plugin for the first time, see what the presets do and you can uh, you can jump in there. So here's the presets up on this bit where it's got this initial one. We tap that down and here you go. Here's all the different programs that we have here. And there's some fun stuff in here. I really love this Pop Mix 80s because this kind of shows what this thing can do. You can see here with this one, we've got the piano. We've got the Model F piano and we've got strings and pads this synth pad 2 so we could change these up if you want to but these are the default ones that it's putting on these two here uh, the other thing that we've got is we've got the ability to change all of our settings here so you can see that you can play around with these These are more for, for folks that are using MIDI stuff they're going to go sort of next level but some that I do like is that you can quickly change the octave handy if you've got a controller that needs that. And here you've got auto transpose. So if instead of playing in C major, I wanted to play in C sharp major, but still actually just hit a C, I can do that. I love plugins that do that because it gives you a little bit of a head start. We've got effects here. Now, these are pretty cool. By default, you'll normally just sort of have like a three band EQ with your bass, your mids and your trebles, and you probably know what they do. Want to add some more bass to that piano? We can do that. If we want to turn it on to the strings and pads, we just hit the enable button here and say we want a little more treble on our strings. Opens up those synth strings a bit with a bit more bass, a bit more treble. We've also got this over here. We can enable, and this is our second effect, which is a flanger. And turn it off there. But over here on the right, look at all this. You got all this business. You can actually change it up. So if instead we wanted the tremolo on those keys instead of the flanger, we can change it up, enable it. All right, let's uh, let's record in a part. I like the sound of that. So let's hit uh, hit the record. We'll start this one on G. One, two, three. <laughs> that nice synth pad sound. Very cool. Now we need uh, we need something a bit sort of trebly and jangly to kind of drive the lead of this little piece that we're putting together here. So again, we'll hit it, we'll duplicate it, and uh, this time we're going to go in and manually do some of this stuff. So we haven't used, what haven't we used? We haven't used the keys here much. So we'll go to our keys, and uh, why don't we go to the marimba? All right, now this one seems to have a bit of a built-in... Uh, has this got the ping-pong delay on there? Uh, maybe that's... No, it's, it's just part of that marimba. Or maybe it might be in our master. Yeah, there you go. It's our master delay. So the other thing I wanted to show you here is that as well as your individual effects, you've also got your master channel over here. So you can see we've, all, we've got delay and reverb on here, and we've got our master there. So uh, we can put the EQ and a compressor on here. which will just give you some compression on that. And if you want to learn more about compression, plenty of videos here on the channel. If we don't like that delay, or if we want just a little bit of that delay, 
And here's the cool thing. We can actually tell it which of these we want it on. So if we want a heap of it on this third zone, we can do that or turn it off. So there's, it's simple, but under the hood, there's ultimate control here in Numa Player to really get your sound sounding the way they want. Now, I do want that delay on, and I want just a little bit of it. I'm going to do a little uh, sort of arpeggiated bit here if I can actually coordinate it. <laughs> see. Yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't go well. I think I think it's too much going on there, see. All right, we're just going to do something a bit simpler here. So we'll hit record. All right, that's not bad. Not really digging that sound though. So we're gonna go in here and change the sound. We're gonna go away from the marimba. And what about some vibes? I do love some good vibes. <laughs> so we're gonna try this one. And here's the cool thing, because you've got volume control right here in the app, we can just change things up there right in the app. Very cool. And you've, you've also got, uh, obviously, your effects down here. So this is like a shortcut to the effects that we have over here that we can play around with, which is pretty darn cool. You can see how much you're mixing in of these. Let's add some stereo chorus to that. That might be cool. All right. There we go. Uh, a good question here. You know what? I haven't looked into the details. Uh, Jay will know. There you go. Jay knows it's samples. I did think it was samples because especially things like the acoustic pianos, there's no way that those are actually, uh, that are not it. Uh, yeah, about a one gigabyte uh, download once installed. So I think it was on the Mac, it was about 300 meg. And I think on iOS with the overheads and stuff, it's, uh, it's yeah, like Jade said, closer to one gigabyte. But uh, it, it's worth it, to be honest, with with the level of stuff you get here. Like, especially if you don't want to shell out for iSymphonic and Clev Grand and um, any of the, uh, what are the ones I'm forgetting about? <laughs> Jade's covered a heap of them. But anyway, any of the paid plugins, this thing, as you can see, it's super simple to use and you can really build up something cool. All right, let's, uh, let's add another one. This time we'll go back in here via the instruments this way, Numa Player. And uh, why don't we go, let's find something really wacky. Let's go to our, uh, up here to our plugins and let's find something bizarre. Uh, I think there was, was it this one here, Clock and Strings. Let's see what Clock and Strings is all about. So this one is uh, our Celesta and our Strings Ensemble together, and it sounds like this. Let's try it. Let's try something a little bit like this. Two, three, four. Pretty cool. Uh, all right, we do, we do need we do need that final like instrument. So let, let's find like a string instrument to make this uh, to do like a really nice uh, high melody part to to complement this one. So well, this time we'll go in here and we'll dial in strings ourselves. So we'll go to the strings here, and what about a what about a cello? Hmm, I haven't tried the cello yet. All right, let's see. Oh, what have I done wrong? <laughs> I broke him. Um, I have done something incorrect here because we have lost. We have lost the sound. Did I not turn it on? I didn't turn it on. There you go. There's a trap for you. If you got nothing on, if none of this stuff is on, it's not going to do it. All right, that's not bad. But the attack's a bit slow on this. I need a faster attack.
All right, we're, we're going to use this more as a um, as a pad here. All right, so that blended in a little bit more than I wanted it to. Boop. And we'll open it up here. Uh, but that by itself <coughs> sounds like this. Cool. So we uh, we've probably overdone this, but I wanted to I wanted to show you just the the complexity of this. Oh, look, we got one. We got one. It quit. We're gonna reload it. Let's see if it's actually still working. Because sometimes. Ah, there you go. We pushed it. We've got six of them there, and we got the uh, the plug in quit reload option. And sometimes, even when you reload it, it doesn't work. Now it's probably reminding me that we need to um we need to jump out of that one, and jump back in, and usually just closing and reopening fixes it. Sometimes it does it. Oh, this is this is actually not bad. I don't mind when this happens live because it shows what can happen. Yeah, there it is. It's a spinning thing. So what we'll try to do, what we'll usually do is close out boop, boop, and jump back in. So it's, it's good to know. It's good to know the limitations of something like this because, again, we're pushing this pretty hard. On some of those tracks, we've got like two different samples that we're using and uh, it's still playing. It did. It got performance anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so many people are watching it. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing. It is It is going to be heavy on the resources. I mean, I'm running the iPad Pro 2020 here, uh, which has plenty of overhead. I think if you're on an M1, you'd probably be able to have plenty more without problems. If you were running a uh, an older or a less capable iPad, yeah, might not be uh, might not be as good. There's one final preset here that I love that I want to find a use for. And uh, uh, it was the Christmas choir. Where was it? Uh, the She's Lovely is pretty cool. But there was the, here it is, the Xmas Choir. Let's uh, take a listen to this Xmas Choir. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? You'd get Christmas carols in, uh, in, what are we? April? Are we in April? March. <laughs> I got a bit excited. All right, let's uh, let's just do one more track here. I'm just gonna make something up. I'm gonna make something up really random and weird here. Two, three. <laughs> Why? Because fun. There you go. Uh, so that is pretty much gonna do it. And of course, we can start mixing this and uh, and panning it and doing all those sorts of things. And the other cool thing is because these are all MIDI, again, we can change them to our heart's content. You can come in here. Oh, didn't mean to split. We meant to edit. Undo. Redo the recording. All right. We can come in here and you can actually edit your MIDI notes. You saw earlier how we can go in there and transpose the MIDI notes. There's a whole lot that you can do in here. And we've probably, this is a deep dive, but it's probably still only about 50% of the power of this thing. Free uh, is a bit resource heavy, as you saw there, because it had a little crash there. But I don't think you can argue about this in terms of how cool it sounds and uh, how useful it's going to be in your GarageBand projects. Alrighty. Um, I like that. I like that little ditty. I, I want to do something with this. Like, um, <clears throat> welcome to the Mellow Hour here on Studio Live today. Hope you're well. On today's show, we'll be talking about how to relax in the best way possible. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> um, speaking of relaxing, I saw some people out doing Tai Chi the other day, and I'm like, that's my kind of like uh, physical activity. <laughs> Like just the whole, I know that it's not as easy as it looks and I've never actually done it, but just like the poses and the, the, the quietness and the just, I don't know, the serenity. It looked like absolute serenity. It looked amazing. 
All righty. Uh, let's, uh, let, let, let's finish off here. If you do have any final questions, we'll be here for about five more minutes just while we, uh, while we mop up and wrap up and get ourselves done here. But if you do have a question in that time, please pop question in there. Uh, hit the like button on your way out if you, if you had some fun here. And um, yeah, do join us again for uh, the, the shows next weekend. So let's just do a quick recap recall on uh, the timing of our live shows here on Studio Live today. So the week now actually kicks off. The weekend kicks off on Saturday for most folks with the happy hour. Uh, so no more Friday shows at the moment, at the current version. So Saturday's the happy hour. Sunday afternoon or evening for most folks is going to be your music live. That's where I play two hours of the best independent music in the, going around. And then uh, we have this show here, which is uh, Garage Band Weekly. We've then got our Creator Town Hall, which at this stage is happening sort of Thursday night, which is very early Thursday for many folks around the world. I know that's 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 the one that I that's my throw in the bone for our UK and European friends and also our friends here in Australia because it happens uh, sort of mid morning for our UK and Europe friends and uh, sort of early evening for Australians. So it gives everyone an opportunity to catch some live. But yeah, if you could smash like, smash it. Um, <laughs> I, I was talking to um to my uh, sister in law for all intents and purposes, my my uh, brother in law's. Uh, partner on the weekend and she's like oh man i don't know i don't really watch youtube i don't know if i'm subscribed to you and her kid has her phone and i'm like subscribe to me and they're like what's your channel and i'm like uh this <laughs> just just type studio live today and uh, so he found it and subscribed and i'm like yeah no, but, you know remember smash that like and hit the bell notification and turn on notifications and i get a message from her yesterday saying and like it was a screenshot of her phone that just said, what happening now live, your music live. And I'm like, oh no, they actually put notifications on. So yes, uh, I, I don't I don't mind if you don't hit the bell on YouTube, uh, but don't uh, don't come and cry and say, oh no, I missed the show if you don't do the bell thing. Um, but me personally, I'm not a beller. I'm not a, I'm not a notification kind of guy. Uh, Vortex, drop it on. Love playing with Numa Player on my last live stream. Yeah, cool. And speaking of uh, speaking of Mobile Music Pro, that's probably the the one thing that I'm, I'm I forgot to say here because uh, is that is that Premiere set up now, Vortex for uh, for the the Town Hall? I'm just going to try and find it here. If not Town Hall, your uh, Round Table. Because I know I saw something on uh, on the. I saw something on Instagram, but I'm not sure if it's actually up oh, there. It is okay, so we have it here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you by saying what you want to do because I was lucky enough to join Vortex from Mobile Music Pro as well as uh, the wonderful Jade Star and Jamie Mallander. Uh, and we had a, a very cool chat about mobile recording and about all things mobile creation. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to join the fun, uh, then you can actually catch the premiere. So uh, I'll be there. Uh, actually, no, I won't be there. I won't be there live because it's two thirty a.m. I did. I did the sums on this one. I'm like, I just can't do it. Uh, Jamie probably will be because it's a better time for him. And you know, we know that Jade is a is a doesn't require sleep. So she's a, she's a being that requires no sleep. So she might, she'll probably be along there. Uh, but yeah, do do catch that one because it was a, a really good chat and uh, a lot of fun. So uh, I've thrown that in the uh, throw that in the chat there, and uh, I'll link it down in the description as well. But uh, that should be that should do it here. Uh, final question: Are there any Windows alternatives to GarageBand? You know what? I've actually got a video about that. So if you put Pete John's GarageBand Windows into your even if you spell it wrong, I've actually got two videos about it. I did one and then I did a fresh one because I got questions from the first one. So uh, yeah, I think that that tells you everything. <laughs> no, but yeah, there are some alternatives. Uh, what you want to try is um, uh, Cakewalk Band Lab Cakewalk by Van Lab, uh, or you can um, check out Reaper is another one that I really like. Nothing quite has the ease of use. FL Studio has like a free version. Uh, Fruity Loops, I believe, that a lot of folks use. Um, yeah, so th th there's plenty of alternatives out there. Nothing that's quite got the simplicity and ease of use as GarageBand, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, go watch the video because they're fun. I walk around and talk about things. And then it's funny because a lot of people that don't watch the whole video, it's only a five minute video, but a lot of people don't watch the whole video. And they're like, well, actually, you could use a virtual machine and install uh, install macOS on that and then use GarageBand. So ha ha ha. 
And I'm like, uh, could you just go to like four minutes 12 where I say, and I know some of you are going to say, you could just use a virtual machine, but that is A, breaching the terms of service of Mac OS, and B, I've never seen anyone run a virtual machine version of Mac OS running GarageBand and actually be able to use it to make music. You can load the program, but as soon as you try to add a plugin, plug in a USB keyboard, plug in an audio interface, it knits the bed. So uh, there you go. That's my thing on that. GarageBand is unmatchable. Congratulations. Release singles, release music. Hello. Hope you're doing well. We are just finishing, unfortunately. So uh, thanks for dropping by. Uh, as we say at the end of every show, please, folks, be kind to yourself this week. I really mean it. Embrace some of those changes. Eat those frogs. If that sounds weird, go back and listen to the earlier part of the show. Uh, please be kind to others as well. Don't be a D word. You know, one likes you if you're a D word. And uh, keep creating, folks, and we'll see you next time on the show that we like to call Garage Band Weekly. Bye for now. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Need an answer to your question.